this network. going on facebook this is the bury the needle podcast episode eight we have rocco from east fan inc and we also have our special guest josh darby from golden tempo golden temple tattoo sorry he's a body body modification specialist what's going on y'all 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 where's uh where's the rooster right here i'm trying to get in dog yeah, we've been trying to get trying in for a long in, time, dog. Trying to get in, dog. So everybody understands what the show's about. We talk about uh, the tattoo uh, shop industry and in the tattoo shop industry. Uh, East Van Wearing Tattoo Company at one time did have this gentleman here, Josh, as a pure center shop. But since the pandemic, uh, we removed it because it's too much. And Josh is going to explain a little bit about, you know, going through the procedure of getting back into uh, piercing after this pandemic and what steps he had to do. And also, he's going to talk about, you know, what kind of uh, merchandise he uses only and what he does. And uh, and we're going to show you he likes to hang around once in a while. And we'll show you a picture of that after. But So, Josh. Yeah, and the pandemic when it happened. Pandemic. All right, where's a good place to start with this? Okay, yeah, so I guess with our shop, we were starting our shop up in uh, it was first getting going in March of 2020, and then it was open for two weeks. COVID hit, everything closed. Um, we started getting everything going again. I think we were a okayed by July to start opening again. Yeah, so the, the the opening day was it was so March, April, May was June first was the actually no um the nineteenth of May people were allowed to open up, but I didn't open up here until June first. Yeah, but, we didn't get going until a little bit into July. I think like even three weeks into July. Yeah, so almost June. Or no, no, no. Sorry, very end of June we started just getting into July. Yeah. But anyways, um, yeah, like you were saying with COVID and all this like crazy like precautions and everything that were put into place, when it comes into my line of work, um, anything oral has been completely off the table since then. Um, explain the- to everybody, explain to everybody, Josh, what oral is. So oral is anything within the mouth region or surrounding. Um, for quite a while there, they even classified anything of front of face was not allowed. So that meant even ears being connected to the face, they didn't let me touch it until, what was it, like September, October. And then they're like, okay, now you can work above the face mask, but nothing underneath. Then they switched it to, okay, now you can work on nostrils, but you can't do anything oral, which makes absolutely, I don't know, not very much sense to me as if you understand science, eyes, ears, nose, mouth, everything's connected. If you're breathing in with your nose, it's going into your respiratory tract. But I mean... People can't even talk without moving their body when they're getting tattooed. It's all connected. Yeah, but no, seriously, like, I don't know. It is what it is, and you got to follow it, and you got to respect the community. I mean, either way, when we were having to work and everything was getting started, we're under um, the N95 respirator mask. You have to wear full eye goggles to seal off everything and a face shield. So all that was invested in right away. Uh, The client's also under PPE. And yeah, I don't know. It's been a crazy, uh, crazy go. I've still done nothing orally. So I offer um, tongue bifurcation, but that still, again, is completely off the, off the table. Still yeah, I haven't done it because I'm just I'm not going to be that guy that's working in that area and getting judged, right? No, you're smart that way. You got respect for what you do. So basically, no more t- no tongue splitting or nothing right now. Nothing, not even a so little. You're, you're not worried about people judging the horns in your forehead, then? No, no. Uh, <laughs> I, think for look, I think they look sharp. Thank you. Is that is that a pun? <laughs> sharp. <laughs> 
Yeah, 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 that's right. That everybody understands. I mean, you see that Josh has horns. Josh, explain to these guys about the horns and how you're telling me about how they're in, 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 so in, in installed. <laughs> yeah, so basically they're classified as something called subdermal implant. So a subdermal implant is a silicone implant that can be put under the soft tissue, just like these guys here. Are you just so, telling me that you got forehead tits, forehead nipples? Essentially, yeah. the silicone tits <laughs> on your forehead. I want to so, suck, so, suck on one, Josh. <laughs> It's hey Josh, true. so how, how did they insert the silicone? Is that just, is there a, a slice or a, like a little cut or something? Surgeon or something? Yeah, it's just it's a little cut, and then you slide it underneath. They get and a surgeon. They get a surgeon, Rocco, and then they get a stripper in there to tell them what looks right, and then the stripper just makes a makes a judgment call, and then the surgeon. Hey, so hole. Josh, the, sh the the bury the needle. This is the, the comedy comedy part over here. Okay, so you know what I'm saying. Yeah, we're gonna change. We're gonna change the name to Barry Oliver pretty soon. <laughs> he's, he's been dealing with. He's and, been um, dealing long with me longer than you've been dealing with me. And and Josh, so basically, <laughs> when you got those guys, who was the gentleman that did those for you? Yeah. Uh, a gentleman by the name of Russ Fox. So someone that's been around in Canada for quite a while. Someone that I actually, before I even got into my journey, I looked up to. Um, me and him had a bit of like a rough start though. Like thirteen years ago, we had a bad run in. But just recently, we worked our stuff out, and you know what? We came to realize you got to build bridges, not burn them. And he yep. did these wonderful things for me here. Nice, yeah, yeah, yeah. We heard a lot about Russ. He's a little crazy guy. He's pretty out to lunch too. With uh, well, you're both out to lunch and stuff, <laughs> right? too, but you know, I mean, uh, hey, Trav, do we have some of the um, pictures of what Josh performs? Like, uh, we have, yeah, Josh, you send him any of the any of the. Um, what do you call it when you, when you cut the skin out, bro? What's that called again? Uh, scarification. Can we show some pictures of Josh when he was normal? <laughs> can we go over that far back? Hey, no, Trevor, there's, there's no record. There's no record. Kind of there's no record. <laughs> uh, let me just... We're going to put something up here and see the kind of stuff that Josh does. It's pretty fucking wild. Yeah, once I pull him yeah. up here. Yeah. So Josh, basically scarification, explain to people what you do. So scarification, it's been around for thousands of years. Um, as far as I'm aware, it originates back to like Africa and stuff. Um, a lot of tribes used it originally to kind of separate themselves with different pattern markings. Um, but what I use it for is just controlled artistic scarring. So I lay a stencil on the skin, much like tattooing. Um, I use a surgical scalpel blade to do skin removal. So the form you guys are going to show is called skin peel, which again, like I said, it's all done by a scalpel blade. Um, there's other forms such as like ECU, which is an electrical cauterizing unit. So it's a controlled burning. But myself personally, I prefer doing the cutting as I find I can get a little more control with my details and scars. It works great for doing it on blackout work such as this is when you remove the epidermis and the dermis layer. When the tissue regrows, it actually regrows back to your standard pigment. So it creates almost like a negative effect. I'm pretty sure you guys got a photo of the cherry blossom removed on the blackout I did. So are we talking about the, uh, the, the tongue splitting photo? Uh, no, the skin peel. So it kind of looks like a red tattoo, but it's not a tattoo. That's just muscles. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> so he's just scarification. I mean, I remember when you were at the shop here, you basically put ink in there after, right? Well, you can. You don't always need to. But yeah, that's something called ink rub. So what you can do is you can leave the tattoo ink sitting in that bottom layer. And as the tissue starts to regrow, when that ink is sitting in there, the pigments start to stain all the building fibroblast cells. And then that kind of creates a little bit of a darker, uh, what do you call it? Creates a little bit of a darker scar. So yeah, that one there is the scarification on blackout. So that's Where's no. I don't, I don't see nothing. I call that reverse pirate tattoo, and then the one that you just described, I call that one pirate tattoo. <laughs> you got it up there, Trev? Yeah, it's up there. 
Hey, Josh, did you ever see that one where the husband and wife, the husband got his hand blacked out and then he got the piece cut out and then put into the wife's hand and then the wife's clean skin was put into his missing axe? That's scary. That was pretty wild. You'd have to have the right blood type. Hey, Trevor. It would yeah. Reject, wouldn't it? It would probably. Okay, be. there it is. There it is. I see it now. So that there, Josh, explain this cherry blossom one. So yeah, again, that's just, that's the skin peel performed on a blacked out leg of my good friend, Barry. And um, yeah, so someone tried to originally kind of tattoo white cherry blossoms, as you can see in the back there. Okay, so that's what that is, yeah. Yeah, but in a different photo, um, one that's kind of, of a closer up of the middle one, on the right side of his calf, we actually did a skin peel while I was working at East Van Inc. to see what it would look like approaching it in my method. And it came out super solid and super white. So that's when you wow. put the ink in there. No, that's, that's knowing. First, that's no cutting way. away all the black. Yeah, that's just cutting out the black. Same thing that I did on, um, that I did on Jody's head with the Chevron bars. Oh, God. That guy's crazy himself, for fuck's sakes, man. I love that guy, eh? We're all crazy around here, Rock. That's how we ended up with you, buddy. Well, <laughs> Nobody else will put up with our shenanigans. I, I just I just love hearing stories about fucking Jody. He's just a crazy... Well, he's a beautiful person, one thing. He's a really good guy. Yeah. I mean, but the stuff he does, like he told me the story where he tattooed his old cock. <laughs> at a fucking hotel, you know, the broad. I wanted to be there. <laughs> <It's> pretty wild. <laughs> I, I want to be there. Why well, wasn't I invited? But, you know, and then he... Rocco the invites ball. you to uncomfortable situations, everybody, just so you know. One of the first interactions me and Rocco had was him inviting me to an uncomfortable situation. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean... He fucking... Had, he had tattooed his eyeball. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> yeah, I'll leave it at that. Hey, Josh? Hey? Like, how do you tattoo your eyeball? With a uh, syringe... Yeah, it's called scleria injections. I personally, I don't endorse it as it's very, very dangerous. And I personally believe you should not fuck with your eyes. You need your eyes for yeah. seeing, dog. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They, 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 you, you talk, you did Joey say, but he, he got his eyeball black, but it didn't. Like, was that someone that knows what they're doing? Is that who did his, Josh? Yeah, but like, I mean, even if you are an educated practitioner in that, in my eye, <laughs> you should you shouldn't be doing it because not everyone's anatomy is the same. Not everything's consistent. It only takes like over injection, a very small amount, to really like yeah collapse your eye. Or if you cause abnormal pressure to the surface of your eye, you can, you can put pressure on something called your retina, and if the retina changes angle, well there goes your vision. So I don't know. I think the the risk outweighs the reward. And that's where it kind of, I don't quite fully agree with it until there's a safer method in my eye. If y'all, yeah. in your eye, and if anyone wants to do something dangerous, y'all can just hammock, come hang out with me for one day. Yeah. Get a nice black eye. <laughs> Get a nice black eye. <laughs> hey, um, Trev, yep. can you see that picture where he's hanging around? What do you mean? What do you mean what I mean? The picture where he's hanging around. You say that picture, Josh? Oh, I thought you sent the picture. Hold on. I can send it. Yeah. Check out what he does, too. This is crazy. Yeah. Okay. Hold on a second. I'll find him. Anybody want to look at Nikki's cleavage? Yeah, I do always. Is Lena around? No, she not. <laughs> Don't tell her I'm looking. Show me. <laughs> Give a quick shout out to the people on Facebook tuning in. We got Willie P, we got Susan, and we got Brian Penner. Shout out to Ikey too, Ikey baby. Okay, there's one. And hold on, I'll find one more photo that can kind of be shown. You're not working today, Ollie? No, my dog tried to bite my finger off. Show me your finger. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. It punctured it all the way through and then ripped the tip right off. Today's the first day with no bandage. And it was still like uh, splitting and splitting and weeping a little bit. So I just filled all the cuts with crazy glue and just ground and hope for the best. <laughs> crazy glue? <laughs> yeah. I use that to put my teeth back in. 
when they fall out. <sighs> Got two fake ones in the front. Sometimes they fucking bite on stuff too hard and they fucking pop them out. My, my dentist doesn't work, doesn't recommend you use crazy glue though. Uh, that's one of my most common questions. People ask me, "Are your teeth real?" What? What do you mean? Like, do I eat with them? Like, yeah, they're fucking real. They real? Teeth real, dog? <laughs> Fuck the more I start training bulldozer at the ports. Gotta love a job that pays you to learn, to train, and learn something, eh? Yeah. yeah. Thirty-five days of training to put about sixty thousand dollars in my pocket, and they'll give me the rating. Where do you find that? Oh, beautiful. Got that right. I can't get my ba- my rating above X. So, Rocco, what's going on in East Van? Uh, you know, East Van, uh, we got, uh, of course, by appointment only. Uh, consults, by appointment only. We don't do walk-ins here. Yeah. I find it way better. Yeah. Um, you know, there's, there's nobody walking in. And one thing I like about it, too, is because... East Van is our commercial drive, Little Italy. So it's like my office here. And people, you know, in the Hummers Park, though, front, people come by and say hi, which is great. You know, I love when people say come by and say hi and everything. But I like that I have a little bit of, I got a spot here that nobody can come and see me because you can't come in. Right? We got yeah. buzzers and everything. But I have a little joint next door, about three uh, three doors over, and then I go hang out. It's a cafe. John Cardo's where I go meet people and have all my meetings over there because we want to keep the shop sterile. Like, I'm really big on this fucking pandemic thing. I'm really, you know, if your temperature's over 37, I don't let you in. That's it. And- we're, same. we're on the same thing. I think that, honestly, in my opinion, I think that that's more an effective uh, precautionary measure that every business should be doing. That makes me feel comfortable as a patron of your business or your restaurant to know that you checked everybody's temperature because you might not necessarily be feeling sick, but your body is excellent at, at you know having that preliminary thing where you get an elevated temperature. It's a great warning sign. I think every business should be doing it. There we go. You guys know that I did have COVID, right? I just got out of fucking uh, quarantine. My wife caught it from our uh, hairdresser. And the thing I'm trying to say is, like, we, us, young people, we're, we're okay. We're not going to die from it. Yeah. Uh, it's just a common flu. As long as you stay home, you just don't want to spread it. Yeah. And the thing is, though, that I'm trying to explain to you, we have to take care of our mothers, grandparents. That's right. Older people. Like, I mean, you see, you guys see that fucking, that fucking loudmouth guy in Toronto with the fucking horse teeth coming into the fucking airport. No, I'm not wearing a mask. I got asthma. And you know, I'm not doing the fucking uh, the test. No, I'm walking right out of here. You know what? Like, just leave. But he makes a big scene. Yeah. Screaming at people in the lineup that are taking a COVID test. They're all seniors. Like, people like that, I, I don't think they have any education. I mean, they're worried about going back to work. Go back to work. You know, if you don't want to wear your mask, don't wear it. But I guarantee you, you come to my shop, you want to wear your mask, those horse teeth are going to get knocked out for one thing. And you won't well, be able to come in. Whoa. All right, so we don't have to hear him no more. Uh, well, but I'm just saying the end of the day is that people are not taking this thing the right way. We're here to protect our seniors, okay? We're here to protect our parents and everything. The pandemic, once I got it, I talked to my doctor who says, good, now you're, you're vaccinated. You're vaccinated. When we were kids, everybody, and whoever watched the show, listen to me, all you young people have no fucking education. When we were kids, if somebody had smallpox, chickenpox, or any kind of fucking, uh, you know... You, you were sent to that house to get infected. Then you were brought home and you sat at home and you got through it. Just like this fucking thing. Yep. I'm not saying go get it. But now you got the antibodies and you're to fucking fight in, with your immune system. Correct, Josh? Correct. Rocco, so now, grew, they, Rocco they, grew up with know. Philomena. I know her quite well. And the, you, they weren't worried about the chicken pox. <laughs> I'll tell you that. They were worried about Philomena. I'll tell you something. The thing was, <laughs> you had to get sick, so you got rid of it. You'd never catch it again. That's it. Now, the thing is, I don't understand here, is that I don't understand is that when I was, you know, 14, they wanted my kids to start their corn. I just got off the fucking phone with Coastal this morning. They want my oldest son to stay home until the 10th of March. <laughs> and I don't understand why, because he was tested fucking uh, 10 days ago. Friday, he should have been done. Now they want me to stay home from school until the tenth of March, another ten days. I said, "Fuck whatever, man." But anyhow, did you get ever since tests? ever since they came out with the rectal yeah, test, I've been going to get tested daily. The what test? The rectal test. 
I go in every day now and just make hey, sure. Trav, put that yeah. picture up of Josh <laughs> hanging around. Okay, just a couple more minutes before I start kicking shit over again. So, yeah, we'll go back to Josh Darby here. He sent me a couple photos. Check this stuff out, man. It's wild. Got this one here. I tried hanging around like that one time. I didn't like it. It hurt like hell. Is it up? I can't see it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, it's up. It I is. see it. It's up. Yeah. So that one uh, there, it's called a lotus suspension. So it's supposed to look like a lotus meditation. It just gives you the look. look at that. <laughs> cross-legged and hanging. So yeah, it's a, called a six-point suspension. So there's four hooks in my legs, two in each, and then two in my back. If I hung myself from my dick, would it permanently stay longer? Or would no. It, or would it go back to normal? <laughs> it's, it'll be done. <laughs> <laughs> it'll be done. It'll be toast. I've lost 100 pounds. I could probably hang from it. Bro, there's hey, actually, there's literally people that do that with rope and shibari. Like, they'll, they'll wrap the shit around there. Yeah. And then you can, like, hang from it. Hey, Josh. So, explain yeah. to people, like, they're looking at this picture. Like, explain to them. I mean, the needle that's in you. Like, what, 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 like, explain it. <laughs> Fine. So, the hooks and stuff that are throughout the body are, they're a thickness called about six gauge. So, imagine something that's about, like, four to five millimeters thick sometimes. Passing. For all you northerners, that's a halibut hook, by the way. <laughs> yeah, and that's passing <laughs> through about that much tissue wide black yeah wild and you're not bleeding well yeah there's a not little bit you of fucking take them out <laughs> <laughs> yeah once you take them out <laughs> all yeah, the fucking believable josh yeah. man. and then we have uh we've got one more picture here Fuck. that was that day gone a fight with spider-man Oh, yeah, yeah. So that one there, it's called a cube suspension. So that's just one continuous rope that went to one, two, three, four, five, six, or no, there's eight hooks in my body. Yeah. Oh. Two in my legs, two in my chest, and four in my back. Wow. And yeah, that was within a cubed frame. Oh, my God, the knee one fucking driving me nuts. Yeah. yeah, I don't like the leg ones. <laughs> that sucks. Ah. That's crazy. That's crazy well, you're beautiful you see, inside and out, Josh. Yeah, I don't know, man. That's fucking nuts. Yeah, I don't know why you're wearing. Hey, what's that view of there, Josh? <laughs> where, where is this? So that was in uh, downtown Vancouver on thirty something floor. I can't remember. It was really high up. <laughs> is it a broad, is it a broad's house? No, this is um, a condo thing that was rented out by a bunch of photographers for doing um, Vancouver Fetish Weekend. They were doing like fetish photo shoots with all these girls and stuff in there. Yeah. And then um, me and an old friend did that hanging together. I did that once, but I got tricked. I found out the girls were actually dudes. <laughs> <laughs> well, once you're too far, you're too far. You can't turn back now. Dude, like, we told you it was a fetish thing, man. <laughs> yeah. So what else, Josh? What else? What else? Yeah, I don't know. I guess, yeah, just with COVID, all you, all we can really do right now is we're going with the flow. I mean, the personal shop that I had started up with Jeff, I mean, we're doing great for what COVID is. It's weird. Our busy, our slow season didn't even exist. Is that, a, is that the Golden Temple tattoo? Yes, yeah. Yeah. And that's in Surrey, right? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Guilford. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you can't say Surrey if it's not Surrey. People get offended. Yeah. <laughs> it's out of wall. <laughs> it's like, it's actually South Delta. Yeah, it's actually Wally. <laughs> it's, actually, it's actually Northern Tawasin, okay? <laughs> yeah, anything but Surrey. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> we don't call it Surrey anymore. We call it the land with the beaver sign. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, but what else? What else? Are you, ever gonna, are you ever gonna come up here and do some work or yeah, absolutely. Once we're allowed to. 
I'm going to get back to like traveling, doing something. Yeah, Ollie, what's going on with Divine Inc.? Not a lot. We got a new resident artist, Tamala Anderson. She's amazing. <laughs> She's covering for me right now. She's killing it. Her name's not actually Tamala Anderson, but so we'll, tash, we'll go with that. <laughs> so we'll just keep it so that she can keep those peepers on the side. <laughs> um yeah she's great she's working hard you know long hours i'm booking into june so that's awesome i just uh you know i've got more work than i could handle probably use another resident artist we got Corey belmont starting his second round of his apprenticeship he quit five years ago he did six months and then he quit and he's going to come back and do a second six months because he's lived a life filled with regret for the last six years so he's going to try and finish and get back to tattooing we're excited for that Hopefully we've got some of the crew from down south coming up here one day. But yeah, the world's pretty much shut down. I haven't gone down to see my parents. I haven't gone down to see Rocco or his mom. Or yeah, it's been a long time, man. We're coming up on a year here. So wow. Well, you know we want you down here, but don't be in a hurry. Yeah. Take care of the business first. You know, and then well, that's the thing. So that's our another exciting announcement. Actually, we take possession of the upstairs apartments um, tomorrow, and then we'll probably move in hopefully by April first. And then I'll be selling my house in Kitima, and then hopefully, 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 huge prayer and hope and support and planning and work. Obviously, hard work over everything. We'll be buying the building here downtown Terrace. That's the goal for this year. I'm just the building you're in. The building I'm in, just put all my chips on the table, live upstairs, and just really grind it out for the next five years, man. Yeah. Is it a big suite upstairs, all? Uh, no, two-bedroom apartment. That's okay. How many suites are up there? Just two. It's like a nice big two-bedroom apartment with a front room and stuff. So basically, it's your shop, and upstairs is one, one apartment. One apartment with two rooms, yeah. And then... That's, good. that's, that's exactly what you need, because you got all the fucking parking in that fucking shop for all your toys. And then, yeah, I got a parking in there for the bikes and stuff, and then I actually have another parking spot out back beside my garage, so I can park the little rider there or whatever. Nice. Yeah, good for you. I hope it works out. Yeah. Yeah, it's been great, man. We got a lot of support having the podcast here, and hopefully we level that up, and me and Trevor, start working on a recording studio here, art gallery, you know, it's something that we can actually finally grow into rather than have just um, immediately outgrown it. Like there, it wouldn't be hard to put six artists in here eventually. Like it's, there's so much room. And yeah. Room. Yeah. It's a big shop. Yeah. It's a big shop. Oh, you got lots of fucking room to get some of these guys from down there up here too. Right. Yeah. I want your blonde down here for a month. Well, as soon as we can come down, we'll trade up. We'll trade them like cards. <laughs> I think what I'll do is come up there for a fucking week. In the fishing season, I'm gonna, yeah. I'm going to tattoo my ass. I want to do a fucking devil woman on my ass. And then fucking uh, we'll go fishing, too. I still got to do the little monkey coming out of your butt cheeks. I want I want Matt Child's fucking nose in my ass. I want, I want to tattoo Matt Child's fucking nose in my ass. That fucking Yeah. Uh, I remember some met a fucking bigger goof in my life. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Someone walks around thinking they're so fucking tough. Eh? It makes me laugh. Fuck. My fucking my ten year old's more gangster than him. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's let's leave that for the axes up. Yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> let's get it out either. At five p.m. Yeah, five p.m. At, at the end of the day, Josh, the shop's moving in the right direction. Yeah, absolutely. How many artists do you have tattoo in there? Uh, we have two actual artists, so Jeff and Mark. Um, we have two apprentices that are learning to tattoo. So the one girl, Cora, she's actually started Gun Time. Uh, the other girl, her name was Vanessa. She actually worked in your shop as a teenager um, doing the teen program thing for job experience. I guess she did a few months at East Van Inc. and then had really bad anxiety and then couldn't Rocco continue. has that effect on people, so do I. <laughs> <laughs> Only the strong survive. Uh, uh, exactly. Our hey, Josh, you was at my shop here? Yeah, yeah. Here? Yeah. She met so Lydia. What did she do? She was just doing, like, paper towel and shit like that. Like, nothing crazy. How long was that? Like, 2014 or 15. But she was doing this as a job. I, I was paying her. Youth experience. She was doing some high school program, teen job experience or something. Oh, so now she's learning how to tattoo. 
That was yeah, a mistake yeah. from the school board. They just continued that. That's good. Year. That's good. So I got this uh, young woman upstairs right now. Her name is uh, Ella. And uh, I was just talking to her because I, you know, I don't see my French staff too much. Uh, but anyway, she's, uh, she tattoos herself. And I said, wow, she showed me some stuff on her fucking Instagram, small little stuff. But I said, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll help you out there. I mean, I'm not going to offer a program for the friendship. We'll just give her some advice. I'm not doing the friendship program no more. Yeah. Last few people I fucking gave the pressure. I'm gonna explain something to people out there. You fucking people out there that want to become tattoo artists, understand? At the end of the day, you need to understand one word. It's called fucking respect. Understand yeah, me? You respect the fucking art. Yeah. Don't think yeah. the next guy, Von D, especially you fucking broads out there, man. Respect I tell you the craft. Holy fuck! I tell you, res respect the fucking art. Respect yeah. it. You yeah. know, I love when they come in there, they do one tattoo, and all of a sudden, that's it. I'm a fucking tattoo artist. You're not a tattoo artist until you've been tattooing for five fucking years, is that me? Yeah. I wasn't, even, I wasn't years, even a tattoo artist. I wasn't even a good tattoo artist for the first probably 11 years. I didn't catch my stride until I'd been going 11 years, until I was comfortable. You were fucking high half the time back then, brother. <laughs> Come on. Being a sober person that that's respects it. the art form. I understand something. Me and my brother have been running shops over 20 years, okay? Yeah. Now, the things I've seen what comes and goes, and I've seen the way this whole fucking art form has changed, okay? From light tables to no tables, from yeah. iPads yeah. to push the button, from yeah. who draws anymore? Who the fuck yeah. draws anymore? Yeah. Who? Nobody. Yeah. Stick and paste, I call it. Stick and paste. You know? So at the end of the day, the actual respect and the actual niche is gone. All you got to do now is make sure you fucking... Pull those straight lines and don't do your blotchy fucking shading and make sure that color's put in right. Don't be digging holes in people when you're putting yellow and red in because you can't tell how much ink you got in there. But at the end of the day, you know what? Just respect it. That's all I'm saying. Respect it. I mean, I, I, and the reason I said women is because I've had a few females come through the shop and just prima fucking donnas. You know, and if they're tattooing now, they're doing great work. Good for you. Just get the fuck away from me. Understand I me? Mean, get the fuck away from me. 2022, I'm going to be doing my first tattoo show. We're gonna try it again. Okay, we are third oh, year. Man, we're gonna clean. We're gonna global's gonna. There will be no artists global. at that fucking show unless they've been tattooing five plus years. I don't give a fuck who you are. Five plus years. Yeah. You're not coming to my show unless you're tattooing five plus years. And besides, I'm only gonna have seventy five boots. It's gonna be a boutique show. Uh, real, oh, it's gonna be a fucking blast. I tell you, I can't wait for it. But 2022, this year we're concentrating on the car club, right? Get some fresh air. But anyway, like I said at the end of the day, anybody who wants to be an artist, respect the fucking art form. That's all I'm saying. Don't think you're a better anybody. Wash, clean the fucking toilets, scrub the fucking floors, rip paper towel, do what do you what gotta do. Yeah, do what it nobody takes. Wants to, nobody wants to do that anymore. They come the fucking word with their fucking... The, I say that all the time. It's like, people are like, oh, you're mopping? It's like, yeah, if you want to fucking... You want to, Rocco told me, if you want to fucking sleep in the penthouse, you got to mop the lobby. Ugh. Yeah. You know what? There's people out there say, "Oh, right, he's a fucking asshole." You got that right. <laughs> you got that right. Not that fucking right. But you won't say it in front of my face, you motherfuckers. But <laughs> anyways, <we> <laughs> anyways, we're, we're gonna up. wrap up some joints now, and we're gonna call it the day. <laughs> yep. So that yeah, was. Uh, gosh, thank you very much for participating in uh, bury the needle. Um, it, this this is Oliver's show. I just uh, I love I love yeah. having you here, Josh, and it's uh, it's been a pleasure having you in my life. I'm trying to still get Rocco out of my life once he's done. Oh fuck! <laughs> <laughs> like a bad case of herpes, you can't get him out of your life. Oh fuck, what, man! I, have I tried colloidal hey, silver gels. I have herpes. <laughs> There's your next shirt. <laughs> So that was the Bury the Needle podcast, episode eight. We've got Rocco from East Van Inc. down in East Vancouver. We have our special He's guest, Josh Darby. He's been tattoo company. <laughs> for tax He's purposes. He's been wearing tattoo company. Incorporated for tax purposes. <laughs> we had our special guest today, Josh Darby, coming to us. He's from. He works at Golden Temple Tattoo in Surrey. Make sure to check him out. He's a body modification specialist. And me and Oliver are here at Divine Inc. in Terrace, BC. And I am YT Rhymes. YT Rhymes. <laughs> and Oliver is the troll that came out of the bridge. <laughs> I love you guys. Thanks for tuning in, y'all. See you at 5 o'clock, uh, YT. Sounds good. All right, boys. Bye, Josh. Thank you. I love you, Bye. Josh. Love you guys out, too. It's F this. Fuck this. <laughs>